Hi friends. Lynn says I need a haircut. What do you think? Yeah, could be time. Well, what are we going to talk about today? What's on my mind today? Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. Our friends Steve and Jan, who were here for several weeks, have gone back to Arizona. It was easy for me to make videos the last few weeks because uh, showing new people around town and taking you along was just an easy thing. Uh, we went and saw some rental houses and some houses to buy. And uh, I really think uh, Steve and Jan, it was their first trip here, but I think they're going to be back and I think they're probably going to... Uh, either rent something or buy something here so that they can spend some time down here. Uh, going back to Arizona, I'm sure it was quite a shock for them. Um, Steve is the friend who stores my RV at his aircraft hangar. And uh, it's in uh, Salome, Arizona. Uh, the day they went back, it was 111 degrees. People are always asking me, why do I go south in the summer and north in the winter? Seems counterintuitive, but we don't go that far north in the winter. We only go to Arizona, and it's nice in Arizona in the winter. But it's really nice down here in Ajijic, Mexico in the summertime. The rainy season is our favorite time of year for those of us who have lived here for many years. Uh, speaking of Arizona, let's check the weather. First of all, here. Hey, Google, what's the weather in Ahihik? Currently in Ajijik, it's 70 degrees and partly cloudy. Today, it'll be partly cloudy with a forecasted high of 77 and a low of 61. And tomorrow, there will be scattered thunderstorms. There was a big thunderstorm last night. Um, woke me up at 3.30 in the morning. I sleep with my windows open and uh, got up at 3.30 and closed the window because uh, rain was blowing in the window from the lake. Um, oh, temperature. Hey Google, what's the weather in Salome, Arizona? Currently in Salome, it's 84 degrees and sunny. Today, it'll be sunny, with a forecasted high of 94 and a low of 74. A high of 94, and you got to realize, that's a cool day in Arizona. Salome. <laughs> Google thinks it's Salome, but she thinks Ahihik, Mexico, is Ajijic. So, anyway, apparently Google's never been here. Actually, they have. There's um, uh, street views <laughs> right up to where I live. Well, so, uh, what are we going to talk about today? Oh, uh, people have been asking about the hummingbirds in the hummingbird nest, the two little guys in the hummingbird nest. Let's go look at the hummingbird nest. Hi, guys. So you see the staple right there, and then there's another couple of staples right there. We had a terrible wind and rain storm, and I came out the next morning and the nest was twisted, the branch was broken, and they were on top of the nest, which was upside down, not in it. So. I turned it right side up and stapled it, and I let them crawl around themselves, uh, which they did, and got back in the nest, and I was afraid that Mama would abandon them, but ow, 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 ow goddamn. So, ah, so you're wondering what that was all about. I'm sitting here in the grass. What that was all about was I stepped on this. went all the way into my foot and uh, it's bleeding a little bit but ouch right there 
I'll be okay. And uh, I edited out uh, a lot of very, very colorful language <laughs> that you missed. <laughs> Foot's going to be okay. I put some Neosporin on it just in case there was something there that I didn't want in my foot. Um, since I'm not driving you around with guests in town today, showing you the north shore of Lake Chapala and the wonderful place that we live, I um, thought I'd just uh, go through some comments today and give you some responses. So that's what I'm going to do for you today, talk about some questions and answers. So let's see what we got here. Uh, this is from an older video a couple years ago where I'm talking about safety in Mexico. Is Mexico dangerous was the title of the video. Um, Pablo says, thank you for telling us that every time I tell a friend that Mexico is not what we think, they always say bad things about crime. <clears throat> but I live in Dallas, Texas, and I see a lot of crime here also. Hey Jerry, when are you going to do a cooking show on how to make that chili relleno casserole? We all want it. And another one says, that chili relleno casserole is a splendid idea. You're so on it about maintenance. She's talking about maintenance. My grandmother had and used to regularly sew with a Singer pedestal sewing machine like that. Ah, okay. Uh, well, the chili relleno casserole. First of all, I cook a lot, but I don't use a recipe. I'll go on to uh, Google and uh, just look at three, four, or five recipes and then shut it off and go do what I do. The chili reno casserole, as far as I know, um, I, I invented that. <laughs> I, I just uh, got disgusted with how difficult it was to make chili rellenos, and I love chili rellenos. And so one day I said, you know, I'm not going to, you know, do all of that stuff and dip the peppers and then, you know, stuff it with cheese and all that stuff. How about if I just use all the same ingredients and I put it in a casserole? So that's what I did. I'll go through the steps for you. I don't have a recipe, uh, but I'll tell you what I do. The first thing you have to do is um, sear the pepper skins. So what I do is I put them on the barbecue. And uh, then I use a blowtorch because I cook on blast. <laughs> Everybody laughs at me because I always cook on blast. They say, well, how hot's the temperature? How, how hot's the oven for that? I, say, I don't know. I just cook on blast. I turn everything up. And I'm not a professional chef. You already know that. But my theory is that more heat just makes it go faster and you got to watch it. So anyway, that's what I do. I cook on blast. So I put the... Uh, poblano peppers on the barbecue. They would pierce them so they don't blow up. Um, and then I just hit them with my propane blowtorch and I sear all the skins black. And you have to do this to get the tough skin off the outside of them. And then you take them and put them in a bag. And I used to use a paper bag, but you don't need a paper bag. I did it with a plastic bag this last time. Just put them in the bag. And for that casserole, I used five uh, poblano peppers. Put them in the bag and leave them in there to steam and steep for oh, about 15 minutes. Then you take them out, cut the seeds out, the stems, and flatten them out and scrape with a serrated knife, scrape the outer skin off. And you don't have to be real particular about it. You leave a little black stuff on there. It just adds to the flavor. Then uh, you have to make these uh, uh, breading layers. I call it breading, but it's just, it, when you're making a chili reno the right way, I, actually, I think I do it the right way. When you're making chili reno's the traditional way, <laughs> um, you have to make an egg batter and uh, dip it in there, and then you dip it and roll it in flour, and then you dip it in the egg batter, and then you roll it in flour, and you can season the flour, you can season the egg batter. Um, it doesn't really have to be seasoned because there's a lot of flavor in the chili relleno anyway with the cheese and the salsa and the chili itself. But I don't do that dipping it and flouring it and dipping it and flouring it and dipping it and flouring it. It's just, that's what uh, 
and it's messy. It's messy. So what I did, instead of doing that, I just mixed the flour and the egg batter. And you can get the recipe for that stuff off any chili reno uh, recipe on the internet. And then I make a pancake out of it, about the size of um, the springform pan I'm going to use. So then I just put all that stuff in there in a layer. I put the, uh, I need two pancakes, put them in the pancake, and then uh, some salsa. I use a can of Rotel's and um, some um, puree. Mix them together because if you just use this, first of all, one can isn't enough and it's too spicy. Pancake, sauce, peppers, cheese, and I use uh, whatever cheese I have. This time I used a white uh, aged cheddar and uh, we really liked that. It was very good. Sometimes I just use, you know, the Mexican Fiesta cheese, four blend cheese, or, you know, whatever I happen to have, even, you know, mozzarella. When Mexicans make um, chili renos, they use um, kind of a bland cheese inside. Well, I just like a cheese that has a little more flavor. Anyway, and that's grated and you just layer it in there and then another pancake and more salsa, more... Um, Peppers, they're all flattened out and layered in there, and then uh, more salsa, more cheese. Stick it in the oven, and basically the peppers are already cooked. The pancake or the breading is already cooked. All you really have to do is melt the cheese in the oven. And so, what temperature do you use for the oven? Take a guess. Blast! Put it on blast. <laughs> and then... Uh, probably takes about uh, 15 minutes till the cheese is kind of melted and crusty on top and take it out and slice it up and it's pretty and it tastes great. So that's my chili relleno casserole recipe. Uh, let's see what else we got going here. Uh, can you vote in Mexico? Um, I can't vote uh, in a Mexican election because I'm not a citizen of Mexico. I'm a permanent legal resident of Mexico. My immigration status is uh, immigrante permanente. But um, I'm not a citizen of Mexico, which means I can't vote in Mexico. Actually, people uh, who move to Mexico and uh, become legal residents have all of the rights of, of uh, a citizen of Mexico except to vote and um, I don't plan on becoming a citizen of Mexico. I am a citizen of the United States and I, at first when I read that question I said, can, can I vote in Mexico? Well I can vote in a US election or a state election in the United States by absentee ballot or um, actually have a place here called the Lake Chapala Society where you can go and vote and they assemble all of the votes and take them to the U.S. consulate in Guadalajara where they are uh, officially stamped as uh, expat votes. So yes, I can vote in U.S. elections in Mexico. I can't vote in Mexican elections in Mexico. <laughs> uh, one dollar at Dollar Tree in the States and um, 75 years old each those eyes uh, Jerry I went to Chapala Riviera uh, that's one of the neighborhoods we drove around with with uh, realtor Mitzi and I noticed how people there take their sweet time to do everything. <laughs> yes, we do. Um, I'm Mexican, and I live up by the border, and it's even slower there 
than where I live. It took me a lot of years to learn how to live in the moment. If you've only been to a border town or a Mexican resort like Mazatlan, Puerto Vallarta, Acapulco, um, Cancun, you don't really get uh, the concept of the Mexican feelings about time. Um, living in the moment is something that it takes a while to get the idea of, to really get it into your soul. And uh, living in Mexico, I believe that I have achieved that, but that's another whole video. Actually, I made a video about something like that about a year ago, and I think the name of it is um, Why I Stay in Mexico. You should go watch that if this subject interests you. Just returned from our home in Panama. It took me a week or two to remember to say a few hellos as I walked around town there um, in Panama, he's talking about. It's taking me even more time to get used to not being so friendly here, and I'm in Texas. Thanks for the videos. You're part of the reason we bought property in Panama in the first place. Yeah, you know, um, when we go to the United States, we have the same kind of thing. Years ago, when I used to drive my old Southwind motorhome back and forth between Mexico and Portland, Oregon, when we'd be down here in Mexico for like six months and then we'd drive up into the States, as soon as we crossed the border, the first thing we'd do would be go to a grocery store, like, you know, a big Safeway or something. And with a, it was a 33-foot motorhome and we're pulling that old Suzuki with it. So we're too big to park, in, you know, close to the door in the parking lot, so we park way out on the edge so you have this experience of walking from the edge of the Safeway parking lot all the way to the front door. And in Mexico, when you're going for a walk, it's buenos dias, buenas tarde, you know, adios as you pass. It, it, it's people are friendly, strangers. So if you do this from the edge of a Safeway parking lot in the border town, like, you know, Las Cruces, Nogales, um, Laredo, we've crossed in many places. Uh, as you're walking, you smile, you say hello, you look people in the eye, and you get this from Americans. What the hell do you want? That's happened to me many times. So I understand, you know. Um, it's, uh, it's different. Uh, people north of the border are kind of closed off in their own little world, and if they do come out of their shell, it's usually with anger. I'm making a generalization and I don't feel comfortable doing that. Most of the people that I know, most of the people I meet are very, very nice people. But there's more exceptions to the rule north of the border than south of the border, I believe. Oh, I like this one. Simply fantastic. Your place looks like it would cost millions of dollars. Well, it didn't cost millions of dollars. Uh, first of all, I bought it 20 years ago, and so uh, prices were not what they are today. And also for all of the additional construction that I've done. Um, if you haven't seen my uh, How to Build a Mexican Casa, go back there and look for that video, but uh, I bought two properties. I bought two houses, and then I built all of the, my living room to join the two houses into one house. So we have uh, 3,700 square foot on a half acre of lakefront property in Ajijic, Mexico. Anyway, uh, it's not worth millions of dollars. I wish it were. <laughs> I don't like this comment. I don't generally, when I'm doing this, say people's names. But if you're going to make a comment on my channel, sometimes I'm going to hold you responsible. Uh, you're going to have to live with what I say about your comment. I've said before that comments never reflect 
the people who read them or the people that they are commenting about. They only reflect the attitudes and the mindset of the people who write the comment. I'm going to name this person. Her name is Carol Townsend, and she made this comment four days ago, and she's commenting about a time that my wife Lynn, who has a lot of physical problems, was dancing with a mop and making some silly remarks. Uh, my wife has a lot of problems, physical problems. She's not lost her sense of humor. Carol Thompson says, I really don't appreciate your idea of entertainment, Jerry. This is ugly for you to exhibit a lady, talking about my wife Lynn, who can't help how she is or her health. Mother said, that'd be Carol Thompson's mother, when I was a kid, to not make fun of people because you can end up twice as bad. Think about that. If you've watched my videos for six years, you know that Carol Townsend does not understand the relationship between me and my wife, Lynn. And that's all I need to say about that. Because if I say any more, it's going to be bad words. Jerry, it seems like only yesterday that you got back f home in Mexico from the States, and now you are going to get ready to leave Mexico again. How time flies. Have a great time RVing through America. Well, a um, couple of answers to that comment. They don't go until snowbird time after Thanksgiving. Actually, we're going sooner than that. Um, I think it would be good to get out of town too. COVID danger, sitting out in the desert alone, maybe in a cave. Smart. <laughs> well, uh, let's talk about that for a second. Uh, we are going back to the RV, uh, which is stored in Arizona, um, fairly soon, a few weeks from now. And um, we love our RV life. Uh, we just... Um, think that we are so fortunate to have what we have considered to be the best of both worlds. A wonderful place to be in the summertime where it's cool and rainy and the weather is, you know, perfect in the 70s. Um, it, 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 here in Ajijic, Mexico. And then to be able to go and see lots and lots of friends that we know in Arizona who are um, uh, RVers, and um, it's just, um, it's a very different kind of life going from 3,700 square foot of paradise to um, our motorhome, and even though our motorhome is big and wonderful and pretty also, um, there are advantages to living in a smaller space. And when you go back and forth, it becomes obvious that it's so much nicer to go three steps in the middle of the night to the bathroom instead of uh, many more steps. Um, when we're in the motorhome, for me personally, um, there's less things to worry about. There's always lots of maintenance when we're here in the summertime with the house. You know, the silly tray, and you know, you get a leak here and a leak there, and a plumbing problem here, and whatever. I, uh, you know, some repainting. I enjoy that, but in the motorhome, um, there's less maintenance. That doesn't mean there's no maintenance. Uh, any of you who have any RVing experience know that uh, that rolling earthquake <laughs> has problems too. Doors fall off the uh, hinges and whatever. Fortunately, we haven't had any serious mechanical problems, but we have a very well-built quality motorhome. It's a 2001 Monica Windsor, and back in the early 2000s, uh, before the dot-com bust in 2007 and 8, uh, motorhomes of high quality were being built with, well, frankly, much higher quality than they are today. If I were going to buy a motorhome today, I would 
still look for um, a high quality motorhome in the same uh, year range. It's also a 350 turbocharged Cummings diesel and before 2006 you don't have to put um, that uh, DEEF fluid in your uh, motorhome or your diesel engine. So there are a lot of advantages to that and um, I've never had a cupboard door fall off. Um, our monocle has solid oak cupboards. There's no particle board. We have ceramic tile floors and a very um, good heating system and whatever. Anyway, the question always comes up, which do you like better, um, RVing and living in a motorhome or do you like living in your wonderful house in Mexico? Uh, I'm not going to say that I have a preference, but I can tell you that when I'm home in Mexico, I'm anticipating getting back to the RV. And when I'm in the RV, I'm not as greatly anticipating going back home to Mexico. And that's not because of Mexico or not because of this wonderful house. It's just, I love being in the motor. <laughs> uh, that's enough for today. Where am I going to end this video? Well, where one of my friends says, right here. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.